Joining us tonight, Congressman Matt Gates, a member of the House Judiciary and Armed Services Committees. Uh, Congressman, great to have you with us. And I have to ask you, uh, that I saw absolutely nothing, nothing in the transcript, nothing in the um, testimony of these two so-called star witnesses. How much longer will the Democrats keep up this, uh, this nonsensical extravaganza? The question you asked me is the very one that Democrats are asking other Democrats. They're having a harder time explaining to their constituents why they're not focused on uh, re reducing prescription drug prices, delivering on health care, helping us reform our nation's asylum laws. Instead, there's an obsession with impeachment and investigations. And I've got to say, Lou, after watching the two star witnesses, it's no surprise Adam Schiff kept them locked in the basement of the Capitol for so long. If that was the value of the testimony that they were going to give, they have never met the president. They had no direct knowledge of the phone call. They never spoke to Mick Mulvaney about any of this. And with Mr. Taylor, even when he met with the Ukrainians, there was no mention of any conditionality with any aid. So the fundamental facts here that the president did nothing wrong do not change. I don't believe that you're going to see polling change as a consequence of these hearings. And Democrats have to ask themselves, how, how much longer will their leadership put their membership through this ridiculous charade? Uh, it, it, that truly is the question. And tomorrow, the, the former ambassador, uh, Marie Ivanovich, uh, uh, ambassador to Ukraine, is it going to be more of the same? Yeah, I mean, I watched the first two and a half hours of the testimony yesterday, and it just seemed to devolve into a debate about how to make Ukraine great again. I think regular Americans watched that, Lou, and they thought, why are all my elected members of Congress sitting there fighting over how to secure the Ukraine-Russia border when we still have those drugs that were in your last report crossing over the U.S.-Mexico border? Uh, and, and so if the Yovanovitch testimony presents as a policy disagreement, uh, as, as a circumstance where there simply was a rejection of a disruptive and different pattern that the president wanted to take our country down, then, hey, uh, I think that stuff happens all the time. It's most certainly not impeachable, and it's not even that interesting. I agreed. Uh, we can't uh, have an evening without Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez, uh, who admitted uh, that this is all about stopping President Trump before Americans can reelect him. Uh, this is this is AOC at her finest. Uh, if you would listen with the audience. At the end of the day, we have to be able to come together as a caucus. And if it is this Ukrainian allegation that is what brings the caucus together, um, then I think we have to run with however we unify the House. We also need to move quite quickly because we're talking about the potential compromise of the 2020 elections. And so this is not just about something that has occurred. This is about preventing a potentially disastrous outcome from occurring next year. And uh, that occurrence would occur in November, of course. <laughs> with the re-election of the president. You gotta love the honesty though, right, Lou? I, I mean, you gotta love the fact that she came forward and basically said if what Al Green said many months ago, and that is if you don't impeach Donald Trump, he's gonna get re-elected. If, yeah. if you don't remove him just by showing you have the power in Washington, D.C., then the American people are gonna send our America first president right back to the White House. And, you know, for Alex to basically just say, well, Ukraine unifies us, so, you know, what the heck, let's go forward with it. It seems to deny any analysis of the facts, and it just shows that this is all over their embarrassment on the Russia hoax. The fact that they were just so let down by the Mueller report and Mueller's testimony, they talked about impeaching Bill Barr. They talked about impeaching Judge Kavanaugh. And now all of a sudden, it's this, it's this Ukraine knockoff sequel to the Russia hoax. And I think the more they put these public hearings out, the more the American people are going to wonder, why in the world is this the focus of our country? Why aren't we focusing on the American people and their needs? And there is no small irony in the fact that the radical Dems are the ones who, uh, after talking about uh, meddling, Russian meddling in our elections, uh, are the ones ultimately who are really messing with our elections, demanding that the American people be denied the right to reelect this president by attempting to overthrow him and uh, with, what, just a little over 11 months remaining before uh, the elections of 2020. 
It's absolutely insane. And, you know, when you when you look at the promises that they made voters, I mean, we're going to have a great time out on the campaign trail showing how they abandoned those promises. And they were just so afflicted by Trump derangement syndrome that they went off on this this foolish Ukrainian venture. But the biggest hypocrisy or the biggest irony is that there's more than two hundred million dollars in military lethal aid to the Ukraine that the Democrats won't bring to the floor and pass in our National Defense Authorization Act because they're so busy trying to use the Ukraine to smear the president. So they're literally depriving the lethal aid that is needed so that they can grandstand about lethal aid. And, Wild. of course, uh, stalling the USMCA trade agreement uh, even larger than any prospective uh, China trade deal. Uh, far more important in point of fact, but uh, Nancy Pelosi just can't be bothered right now. She has... Uh,